I keep having to forget. I mean, I keep having to forget. I forgot. Every time I make a video, a thousand people call me, so I got to put my phone on airplane mode again. But what's up? Back with a daily dosage, as my sister says. My channel is for her. Daily dosage of information and knowledge that I'm, you know, collected over the years. Today I want to talk about how you are afraid of eye contact. Some of you guys are not afraid of eye contact, but the majority of you guys are. And it's okay. Well, it's not okay, but it's okay to admit it now. Start admitting your faults. Michael Jackson in 1985 on an interview told the, in, the, the guy, I don't remember the guy's name. I see his face, but I don't remember his name. He told the guy that when he was making the, the photo gallery for the Bad Album, I don't know if you notice on the bad album. You can go look it up now. His eyes were light brown on all the photo gallery galleries for the album. Those were contacts because Michael stated that he didn't want people to look through his eyes and see his pain and see his guilt and his shamefulness. Why would Michael say that about his eyes? Because he's absolutely correct. Your eyes give off a lot of things. A very intuitive person that is in tune with other people's vibrations and with other people's hand gestures and, and eye rapid movements and stuff will tell you if you look in somebody's eyes, they show their confidence, they show what they're hiding, they show if they're lying, they show a lot of things. And here in, here in 2019 in the Western world where everything is here to exercise the monkey in your mind, which is your ego, a lot of you guys forgot to look inwardly. You have so many distractions out here. Sports, uh, you got all these bank corporations that are on Facebook now that are trying to uh, capture your, um, your information and and they want you to join their organization so you can be a part of their bank system. They're giving out great incentives now. You got Cash App, Vivo, whatever you want to call it. You got so much that is all there, and it's all, to me, a distraction. Even YouTube can be a distraction. With all these distractions, you, you can't look inwardly anymore. You can't look at yourself. So... Your eyes are the window to your soul. And when you're sitting down at an interview, a lot of you guys are unsuccessful at your interviews because your eyes is lying. You're, you're saying something, but your eyes are saying something different. And that's why some of y'all don't get the job that you want. I learned a very long time ago of this, you know, this science of how your eyes tell the truth. And every interview I've been to in the last year, the job wanted me because it's like, I'm not going to say I hypnotized the, the person that was interviewing me, but I gave them this energy from my eyes. This energy that was unadulterated energy, just going transferring to their eyes. And I sat there and I saw that the person interviewing me didn't even want me looking in their eyes. I can stare at you for three hours into your eyes. I have no problem because there's nothing inside of me that I don't, I don't have nothing to hide. You, you get what I'm saying? If there's nothing to hide, then you can look the interviewer, you know, go to the interview, look people in the eye, you know, business meeting, look people in the eye or on a romantic date or, or just meeting someone and look at their eyes. You guys are so shy and antisocial. You're so stuck in your phones. Y'all don't even want to talk to people. You don't even want people talking to you. It's not a good life to live, man. If you want a meaningful life, you got to have meaningful people around you. But if you're stuck in your phone all day, glued to the tube, you're missing out. So anyways, let me, sh let me share with you an exercise to practice on your confidence and staring, you know, and, and, and it's, and it's, to me, it's perfect communication. 
communication is verbal and it's through your body language too. So you want to get somebody that you're, I say get somebody you're uncomfortable with, but that's going to be kind of hard. Get, get one of your friends, you set up a chair, um, and you guys want to get to a point where you're sitting in the chair, staring at each other for the next 30 minutes. You can blink or whatever. Don't move your body, period. Do not move your body. Any little tweaks or little emotional things that come up, pay attention to them. You're forcing yourself to listen to yourself at this point, too. You're forcing yourself to get past the this scared feeling of staring at people in the eyes. And you want to have multiple partners with this, too. Because your subconscious mind or your and your central nervous system cannot tell if you're doing this in real life or you're practicing. So, honestly, the key of life is practicing everything. Getting your nerves shocked enough to do things. So here you are. You're sitting and you're staring at your partner for about 30 minutes. Hell, take an hour. You want to do that for the next couple of days until you get confident with staring at people in the eyes. Until you get confident of stop worrying about how people feel about you when they look in your eyes. I can't read your mind. This ain't Skyrim. It's not Elder Scrolls. I can't read your mind. But we we tend to think if somebody looks at me, they'll see my Blase, blase, blase. But which that is true, but how do you know this person's intuitive enough to see that? Now, women are more intuitive than men at certain things. So, yeah, you might be on a date with a woman, and she might see that. You can't fake the funk with a woman. Not even the dumbest woman. And there's no such thing as dumb and smart anyway. We're going to make a video on it. You can't outsmart women when it comes to this type of behavior. When you're staring in their eyes, they're going to see the real you in your eyes. The authentic you will come out. So, yeah, it's all about confidence. It's all about the nerve shock of getting past the fact that you don't want nobody seeing your shames and stuff. And, and I understand we're humans. We don't want people to see our shames and our faults. And But again, you got to get to a point where you don't care what people think about you and start caring about what you think about you because that's all that matters. Are you going to give up your experience in life to become a creator and put it in somebody else's hands and run and let them run away with it? You've gave them power. Stop giving people power like that, man. Unless you that's what you're into, giving people power. Take control. So, yeah. This whole phenomenon that that goes on with at your interview when you you know you're looking away you may be, you 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 may be looking their eyes for about five six seconds and then you got a thought that hits your mind and your, the thought will make your eyes look away and you look shameful. People see that. I don't have that issue anymore. I can look into your eyes right into your pupils for the whole conversation. No problem. I got past that nerve with practice, and you guys can do it too. Practice. Practice doing this. This is a really important key in interviews and, and when you're running a business in a business meeting, you're doing a presentation, eye contact. Go on YouTube and look at a, a person running, a, a confident person doing an a, a, a interview. He looks at everyone. He'll look at you five seconds into your eye. Look at the next person for five seconds. Of the eye. You're interreacting with them. You're, you're transferring energy. You win people over like that. And actually, there's a book that goes over this really well, too. Um, what is it? Healthy Habits of Inspiring People. I forgot what it's called. I read it a long time ago. I need to I actually need to go on Amazon and find that book. Really good book. And you'll be surprised what you learn from some of these books that that are on leadership. You want to be an advocate reader anyway. Y'all haven't read a book since y'all left high school and y'all barely read books then. The teacher had to force y'all to read books. You don't want to be mediocre anymore. Mediocrity, it's it's too many people sitting in that mediocrity seat. And the results of sitting in a mediocrity seat are staggering. So you want to be the best that you can possibly be. You got to study. You got to 
self-improve, self-actualization, whatever you're into. So I'm signing off for the second. Uh, I'll get back to y'all tomorrow with the next topic. Peace.